हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेस्ट वाटर कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम टॉयलेट बाथरूम किचन इंडस्ट्रियल एंड कमर्शियल वेस्ट फ्लोज थ्रू दी पाइप्स टू द सीवेज ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट एट द सीवेज ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट द वेस्ट वाटर इज स्क्रीन इन स्क्रीन चेंबर टू रिमूव लार्ज ऑब्जेक्ट्स देन इट पासेस थ्रू ग्रीड चेंबर वेयर हेवी पार्टिकल्स आर रिमूव आफ्टर दैट वॉटर फ्लोज इन टू प्राइमरी क्लैरिफायर where solid materials and floating materials like oils and grease are removed then it is transferred to aeration tanks where microorganisms break down organic matter and nutrients in the water the water is then passed through a secondary sedimentation tank where any remaining solids settle out the final treatment stage involves filtration and disinfection where the waste water is treated with chemicals or uv light to kill any remaining bacteria and viruses the treated water is then discharged back into the environment often into a river lake or other water source where it can be safely reused for other purposes the final step is the disposal of any remaining waste products which may include sludge chemicals and other by products of the treatment process these materials are typically sent to a landfill or incinerated this whole process is divided in three parts from screening to primary clarifier it's called as primary treatment or physical treatment where large and small solid particles are removed from the waste water this is essential in protecting downstream processes from damage or clogging from aeration tank to secondary sedimentation tank it's called as secondary treatment or biological treatment in which microorganisms break down organic matter in the waste water filtration and disinfection comes under tertiary treatment also called as chemical treatment before going into details a small question needs to be discussed that is why water needs to be cleaned and why can't we just throw that water in the environment it's because a raw sewage contains a variety of pollutants including organic matter nutrients bacteria viruses and other harmful substances that can pose a risk to human health and the environment if these pollutants are not removed before the water is discharged back into the environment they can contaminate rivers lakes and groundwater sources and cause health problems for people who come in contact with the water now let us discuss each component of stp in detail bar screen chamber as the waste water flows through the bar screen chamber any large objects such as rocks sticks and plastic bags are trapped by the bar screen the bar screen consists of a series of vertical or horizontal bars or wires which are spaced close together the bars or wires are designed to allow the waste water to pass through while trapping the larger objects this system typically consists of a rake or brush that moves along the surface of the bar screen dislodging and removing the trapped debris depending on the type of debris it may be sent to a landfill incinerator or other disposal facility grid chamber from bar screen chamber the waste water enters the grid chamber through an inlet pipe or channel this is where the small bits of solid material that are too small to be removed by the bar screen are removed these small bits of solid material are called grit and they can be really harmful to the pipes and machines in the treatment plant if they are not removed in the grid chamber the water is left undisturbed for a period of time during this time the grit settles down to the bottom of the tank kind of like sand settling down in a jar of water then the grit is removed from the bottom of the tank and taken away to be disposed of properly the water at the top of the tank is then sent to a primary clarifier tank for further cleaning primary clarifier or primary sedimentation tank The waste water enters the primary clarifier after passing through a screening and grit removal process. 
the flow of wastewater is slowed down as it enters the primary clarifier, allowing the settleable solids to settle to the bottom of the tank. This solid material is called sludge. Grease, oils and other floating solids present in the wastewater float to the surface of the clarifier forming a scum layer. This layer is removed by a skimming mechanism that continuously removes the scum layer. The sludge that has accumulated at the bottom of the clarifier is collected using a sludge scraper. Aeration Tank The wastewater enters the aeration tank after passing through the primary clarifier. The aeration process begins with the introduction of microorganisms such as bacteria and protozoa into the wastewater. These microorganisms eat the bad stuff in the water like bacteria and other teeny things that can make us sick. But in order for these microorganisms to do their job and survive, they need oxygen. So oxygen is added by blowing air into the water using machines called aerators. And this process is called aeration. The aeration process is carefully monitored to ensure that the conditions in the tank are optimal for the growth of microorganisms. This includes monitoring parameters such as dissolved oxygen, pH and temperature. Secondary clarifier or secondary sedimentation tank. This step involves using helpful bacteria to break down the tiny particles that are still present in the wastewater after primary treatment. The secondary sedimentation tank is a large tank with a depth of 3 to 5 meters. It is designed to allow the wastewater to settle and the sludge to separate from the water. The wastewater is fed into the tank and it is mixed with air to promote the growth of aerobic bacteria that break down the organic matter in the water. As the wastewater flows slowly through the tank, the tiny particles and microorganisms settle to the bottom of the tank. This process is called as sedimentation. The settled particles and microorganisms form a layer of sludge at the bottom of the tank, while the clear water flows out of the top of the tank. The sludge that settles at the bottom of the tank is pumped out using a machine called sludge scrapper and it is sent to a sludge treatment facility for further processing. Filtration the filtration process in STP involves passing wastewater through a bed of sand or activated carbon filters to remove any remaining suspended particles, dissolved organic matter and nutrients. There are two types of filtration processes used in STPs. Sand filtration and activated carbon filtration. In sand filtration, wastewater is passed through a bed of sand which acts as a natural filter. The sand filter removes any remaining suspended solids and organic matter by trapping them in the sand bed and the filtered water is collected at the bottom of the filter bed. In activated carbon filtration, activated carbon filters are used to remove impurities such as chlorine, organic compounds and other chemicals. Activated carbon has a high absorption capacity which enables it to attract and retain impurities resulting in purified water. Disinfection The disinfection process involves killing any remaining harmful microorganisms, bacteria, viruses that may be present in the water after the filtration process. There are different disinfection methods used in STPs and the most commonly used methods are chlorination, UV disinfection, and ozonation. Let us discuss chlorination first. Chlorine is a strong oxidizing agent that can kill a wide range of microorganisms. In chlorination process, chlorine gas, sodium hypochlorite or calcium hypochlorite is added to the treated water in a controlled manner. The chlorine reacts with the microorganisms, destroying their cell walls and rendering them harmless. The amount of chlorine added is carefully controlled to ensure that the water is disinfected but not overchlorinated, which can lead to the formation of harmful byproducts. UV disinfection 
UV disinfection involves exposing the treated water to UV light, which destroys the DNA of the microorganisms and prevents them from reproducing. The exposure time is carefully controlled to ensure that the microorganisms are effectively disinfected. Ozonation Ozone is a strong oxidizing agent that can kill microorganisms by destroying their cell walls. In the ozonation process, ozone gas is generated on site and bubbled through the treated water. After disinfection, the treated wastewater is ready for discharge or reuse. It is important to note that the quality of the treated water depends on level of treatment it has undergone. Different levels of treatment may result in varying water qualities which may determine its use or release. For instance, highly treated water may be suitable for drinking while less treated water may be suitable for non-potable uses such as irrigation. So friends, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.